welcome to room four and welcome to room four and five's Anzac Day. Fun time. Anzac Day is the day that people in New Zealand and Australia remember those who have served or are serving their country in war. ANZAC stands for Australia and New Zealand Army Corps. Please stand quietly for the New Zealand National Anthem and then remain standing for the Australian National Anthem. Please remain standing. Anzac Day is 
observed on the 25th of April. This is the anniversary where the Anzac soldiers landed in Gallipoli, Turkey during World War I in 1950. Gallipoli is a region of Turkey. The Anzacs went to Gallipoli to help the British to defend their homeland. The boats carrying the soldiers landed at the wrong place. There were steep cliffs instead of a flat beach. The Anzacs fought hard for eight months, but they were defeated. Thousands of men lost their lives and were wounded. Many animals also died. How do we observe Anzac Day? Room 4 will now talk about the significance of the poppies and show their artwork. A dawn service is held at dawn because this is when the soldiers arrived at Gallipoli. Dawn is also the best time to attack the enemy. The service men and women wear their uniforms and medals. They carry flat oh. Many people wear their uniforms and medals or medals of their ancestors. In New Zealand we have Anzac parades. An Anzac parade is where service men and women march together with another community groups like like scouts, girl guides, Red Cross, and schools. The service men and women wear their uniforms and medals. They carry flags and banners. They march to war memorials where there are speeches, poppies and wreaths are placed on the memorial. The last post is played. It is a bugle call that is played at the end of the day at war, at funerals and at Anzac ceremonies. At the end of the last post, we will have 10 seconds silence to remember the men, women and animals who died serving our country.
can we can we get everybody just to stand and we're just going to stand and have a few moments silence just stand and just complete silence just lower your heads a little bit and this is an opportunity just to remember those who gave their lives for us so we could be free so lower your heads and stand very still hands by your sides Thank you. Please sit. also discovered that there were many animals, large and small, who gave unconditional love, companionship, bravery and loyalty during World War I. And... Purple poppies represent all the animals that were involved during the wars. Many of these animals did not survive. Today we honour and remember some of these brave animals with these amazing portraits. Caesar was co-trying to 
rescue a fellow soldier, presumably shot by a sniper from the Turkish army. Hori was an Egyptian terrier that fished to a mascot for the first machine gun battalion of the second Australian Imperial Force. According to the Australian War Memorial, Hori was described by its owner as being intelligent and easy trained. He was employed as an air sentry alerting troops to the approaching enemy aircraft. Thank you. 
this is going to go a little bit of a bit more business. Now, this song, uh, a lot of different schools use it. It's, it wasn't originally for Western Heights, but anyway, the song is it's done in like, it's like a little story. So, the first part of it, it's like a welcome. That's the first part there. So, you can see the first part is Western Heights there. Now, part of that is like a portal. So, it's like a portal. So, the party will be a portal. Western Heights here, Ekarama Ete Ete It's like a pouring out to the people. That's the first line. And then the next part there, Sita Kua Ete Mai Nei. That's also to do with, with uh, welcoming the people. Thank you for coming to our to our school to come here. So when we do the actions, start with Western Heights here, Ekarama Ete 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 Kua Ete is like Kua Ete Mai Nei. Who have walked on to our so when we do the actions, we like we're walking out to this place and go like this. Okay, so we go like that, we go like that, and we're back to here again. So the first that's the first part of the story. Welcome to Western Heights. Thank you my name. Thank you for coming to our school. That's what it is. That's the first part of the story. So the next part, this is the sad part of the story. Because when you're like visiting, uh, welcoming different visitors, they're coming in with their mana, their wairua, and what we're acknowledging is that everyone here has their different ancestors. It might be your uncles, it might be granddads, uh, great granddads, um, who have passed away. Like we're doing for the Anzac thing, we're acknowledging um, all the old soldiers and family who've got. That's what this next part is, okay? So that whole bit there, Moria Maira, that means when we do the action, is that you're okay. bringing, oh, you're bringing um, all of your uh, your ancestors to two minutes. So that part there, Moria Maira, Ina Mati Otamutuye, that's the next part of the story, so it goes like this. Okay, so Mai, you're bringing all of your, uh, the ones who have gone. Now that next part there is like, anytime there's a funeral, there's a lot of tears. So we do the action, it's like we do. That's at the many tears. Maringi is that overflow, overflowing tears. Then a tinjiro in my tail. Finally, it's like just for everyone. Okay? So it goes, Mori Amai, Mamate, Ote, 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 Ote. And it's been a tinjiro in my tail. Then Maringi, Whanui, Ote. Okay? That's the second part of the story. Now the next part, is that okay? We've acknowledged, we've done the welcome, we've done the um, the sad part, acknowledging the next part is yes, we're happy that we're all alive. So is this part here, this part here is the next part is that yes, look, everyone, we're, we're all happy to be alive. Titi, Titi, was look, Titi, Ringa, Kina, Mahi, Yonkel, Muti. That means look at all the people are at there doing the work. Playing sport, they're coming to school. Uh, so that's we're, we're just happy to be alive. We're acknowledging us the living. Then the next part there is Chichi o Inga Iwi Kinga Mahe Ote Muti Akinaiye. Okay. And then the next part is oh the land shaking. The land is shaking.
Kia ora koutou nga whanau. Just say kia ora Mr. Maindonald, that'll be nice. Awesome. Um, I was going to play the next little session um, to do with Nick, No Arms Nick today, but I think we're going to run out of time, so I might just leave that part and just share a couple of other quick things with you. First of all, it's really awesome to be back. Over the holidays, I went all the way from here to South Korea. And that was 12 hours sitting in a little aeroplane seat and getting a bit of a sore butt, I'd have to be honest, because it's a long way. But when I got to South Korea, it was amazing and we didn't see a lot of tourists there but I tell you I really truly believe everybody if they got a chance should go and visit South Korea it is a wonderful amazing country and I was very lucky the Ministry of Education uh, supported me to go over there and meet with them go to some universities and go to some schools. I want you just to think for a minute about a country that is 12 hours away, such a really, really, really long way away, and they speak Korean, they dress a wee bit differently, and they talk very differently, and their culture is very differently, different, but when we got to their school, the first school I visited was called Donggang School. And 
having come from the other side of the world, this is what we saw and heard. I wonder if you can recognize it. So that was pretty incredible. That was a traditional Māori song sung in Korean, so it had been translated from Māori into Korean and then sung in Māori for us as well. It was pretty amazing. And I'll just quickly share with you, because I'm not going to do Nick's story, one of the really big messages that I got from visiting uh, South Korea is that they want their schools to be like ours. And do you know what they decided the most important thing they wanted for kids your age? This is their government decided they want happy kids. And they felt if they could have happy kids, that the learning would all fall into place. And they'd had very stressful kids, very stressed about tests and exams, and some of the unhappiest kids in the world and they came to New Zealand and saw happy kids like we have at Western Heights and wanted their schools to be like that. So that was pretty cool. Now this is a little bit different. I won't share much, but in South Korea their traditional costume is called hanbok. And I got to wear one. Okay. The other thing that I wanted to share with you is that I was really, really privileged. South Korea had a very big war about 68 years ago, I suppose, 1950 to 53. And that war has been in the news lately because it might be just about to officially end. And some terrible, terrible things happened in the Korean War and people from all over the world went to help out. And lots of soldiers from New Zealand went to help out. And there are still New Zealand soldiers in South Korea today. And just for the parents, you wouldn't believe this, but up until a week ago, propaganda is broadcast from about 50 speakers in South Korea into North Korea and vice versa and the army officer delivering the propaganda message from South Korea about how great that country is is a New Zealand army officer. So that was a bit interesting and I went to the United Nations Cemetery or Memorial 
and they had um, graves there for soldiers from all over the world and I got to lay a wreath, a wreath and sp speak in Māori briefly and that was the United Nations flag and the, and the Kiwi flag and it was a pretty special time. Can I just say a really big thank you to you guys for sitting so patiently today and for having respect for Australia and New Zealand and the Anzacs and the freedom that those people worked so hard to get for us. And my message today is let's be worthy of that freedom by being friendly and caring and happy and kind. Thank you. Okay, we just also want to very quickly say that Mr Main Donald's with us at school for another week, but it's the last school assembly we're having that he'll be with us for. So we want to wish him a really good trip because you know how he went to South Korea and he's told us about that? And he went to Fiji for a few days and saw some schools and things there. He's about to go to lots of different countries and he'll be gone all the rest of the term and finding out all sorts of stuff all around the world to bring back and share with us. So let's give him a big clap and a wish him well on his trip. All right, oh, I think part of the reason we've got such happy kids, Mr. Main Donald, is because we love our library and we read so much. We are such a good school of amazing readers. So a couple of things about the library. Um, while I think about it, we've also got lots of Anzac books in the library, about 15 to 20 um, picture books, and we've got some in the non-fiction as well. So if you want to come in and check them out, remember the library is open at lunch times, um, just for the first half. So if you come at about one o'clock, the library will be closed about five minutes after that. So come straight after lunch eating. We've got lots of awesome librarians um, in there to read books, especially to your juniors. And um, I've got a couple of um, adult colouring books as well. And if any parents have any colouring books that um, they don't want, we'll take those as well. To, so you can come in and just have some relaxing time in the library. Also a reminder about the Little Free Library. That's just right outside the hall here. It's that red wishing well. And this is a free library where you can just take books that are in there. You don't have to check them out. You can actually just take them and keep them. But the idea is, is that you also return a book to the Little Free Library so that the library can keep on going. Because if all the books are gone, then there's no library. Um, so go home and look at the books that you have. And if there's books that you don't read anymore or you don't want, you can actually give them to the Little Free Library, put them in there, and then other kids um, and families can enjoy your books. Um, parents and teachers, if you have books that your kids have outgrown as well, we'd love to take them and put them in the Little Free Library. Um, if that gets really full, just bring them to room 12 and I'll um, put them in as we need. Um, so make sure you're checking out the Little Free Library because every day there's different books in there. And there's uh, Sharon just gave some this morning. She's got some Magic School books, Magic School bus books in there. So if you want some of those, check it out. Um, just for the year five and sixes, last year for the first time we did the book quiz. We went to um, Hobsonville Point Secondary School and we participated. We had two teams that we took and one of our teams came second and we got a whole lot of books given to us. Um, we won some books. So that would be awesome. I'm looking for people who, year five and six students who have read lots of books, who love reading, who um, have lots of information in their head about books that would love to be in a quiz. So if you're interested, please come to the library today at 12.40 sharp. I've got a lot of stuff to do this lunchtime, um, like have a flu injection is one of them. Um, but come to the library 12.40 sharp, I'll take down your names and um, I'll, we'll have some training. So if you can commit to coming to training maybe once a week, we'll have some practice quizzes um, and then we'll, I'll get the eight people, May we'll hope to have um, two teams there. Also, on Monday, um, we had Term 1's librarians. If you are wanting to have a break from being a librarian or you want to become a librarian, come and meet me in the library on Monday 
and we'll sign up the new librarians and train them. So we're doing it, you're signing up for a term um, at the moment. And I hear some photos from the book quiz from last year. And finally, just a bit of housekeeping. The top shelf is what we want the shelves to look like. The book's right on the edge, not pushed right on back. People are still pushing them back, thinking that that's um, how we want them. That We just want the books right forward. So um, teachers, can you please help check that? And the pillows go there, which I think we've, we've got the hang of now. And yeah, we'll see you in the library at lunchtime. Miss Marsh will now talk to you about the French lessons that are available at our school. Bonjour tout le monde, je suis ici de vous parler d'une classe française qui va commencer ici la semaine prochaine. Et si vous voulez apprendre le français, vous devez donner cette lettre à vos parents et puis on peut commencer. Et ça sera formidable, je pense. So you know what language I was speaking? Oui, so you've heard some Māori today, you've heard some beautiful South Korean singing, you've heard some English, and now you've heard a little bit of French. So it's been quite an international language assembly. So what I was saying is next week here at um, Western Heights, we're going to be starting a new beginner's French class for those children interested in learning. And in French class, we play games and sing songs and do role plays. And one term, we have a French breakfast where we eat croissants and pain au chocolat, and we do puppet shows and obstacle courses and things. So it's a fun class, a doing class. So if you're interested in learning, you would discuss it with your parents, show them the letter, because they do need to pay for it, and you'll need to be willing to give up a bit of time during the school day. But French is a great language, because it's known as an international language, it's spoken on every continent in the world, and it's really easy for us English speakers to learn, so you get really good at it really quickly. So if you'd like to enrol, it's all written on the back what you do, okay, and I'll say merci, does anyone know what merci means? Thank you for your lovely listening, Sophia. Miss Nami will now introduce the new kid, uh, new student. We've got lots of new kids, new students. So what we might do is get them to all come up to the front of the stage. Thank you. And we'll get the teachers to bring them up because we need the teachers to introduce them quickly because there's so many. Can we get all of room one to come up to that far end together? We have our other new new entrants in the middle and we've got older children down the scene. Okay, and we've got Corrine. 
Lena, who is Connie's little sister at room 52. Hi, I'm Mrs. Ballard, and we've got 14 new children in room 1 today. We've got Johnny, we've got Cyrus, Ellen, Frank, Anne, Charlie, Josira, Aidan, Alex, uh, Louis, Maya, Emily, Emily, and Amazon. from our student council will now talk to you will now talk to you.
Tahiru. All right, we have just two tiny little things to do. So if you can get sat down and be very still and quiet, because there's an important piece just to come from Carter, and it is important, and then a song, and that will be it. So listening up. Leilani and Samantha from our student council will now talk to you. Hi, my name is Leilani. And my name is Samantha. We would like you to, as soon as the PE bell rings, or when you're finished with the PE with the gear, to take all the PE gear back to the PE shed, to make sure the PE shed monitors get back in time and time. <laughs> This is the end of our carnage time. We hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about the importance of Anzac Day. Lest we forget. Teachers, you may now take your classes.